आप जानते हैं कि राजस्थान का स्लेट का पेपर 26 मार्च 2023, 26th of मार्च 2023 इट वाज कंडक्टेड विद द ग्रेस ऑफ ऑल माइटी उत्तराखंड स्लेट हिमाचल स्लेट गुजरात स्लेट जीआरएफ नाइन टाइम्स नेट इंग्लिश एंड गेट ऑल ओवर इंडिया रैंक 38 अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट आल्सो मैनेज टू लॉन्च वन बुक एंड also qualified ukpsc 2019 assistant professor this is saurav preeti live uh, solving all the questions of rajasthan slat paper 2 english so stay tuned for this very important video and also share like and subscribe because once your comments and your uh, message passes on to all the students then it becomes beneficial for the efforts that the kj is putting for you all people okay सो so, चलिए शुरू करते हैं विदाउट एनी डिले स्टार्ट करने से पहले गाइस इस और की एम पी स्लेट और हमारा जून जे आर एफ इंग्लिश टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री का जो मिशन है वो चल ही रहा है उसमें एडमिशन हम अभी भी ले रहे हैं और इम्पोर्टेंट क्रिटिकल टॉपिक्स को क्रिटिसिज्म थियरी के टॉपिक्स को मैं हफ्ते में जो है एक्सक्लूसिव नेट की क्लासेस और स्लेट की क्लासेस लेके सॉल्व करा रहा हूँ तो आप उसके लिए इस नंबर पर कॉल करके अपने जो है क्लासेस ले सकते हैं तो चलिए साथियों अब हम लोग देखते हैं हमारे पेपर को जो कि बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट पेपर है ये है राजस्थान स्लेट का पेपर गाइस और जैसे कि आप देख पा रहे हैं स्क्रीन में बहुत ही इंपॉर्टेंट पेपर है आ, काफी आ, अच्छा पेपर आया था ओवरऑल एक क्विक समरी अगर मैं देना चाहूं तो इस पेपर में ये है कि इस पेपर में जो इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज के क्वेश्चन थे वो थोड़ा सा डिफिकल्ट थे ट्रिकी थे और uh, जो है रिसर्च के भी क्वेश्चन पूछे गए थे एंड मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंटली द क्वेश्चन वर आस्ड फ्रॉम as usual criticism theory literature and it was a very uh, you can say um, uh, i would say that it's not the uh, difficult paper but at the same time it was not so easy so it was a moderate paper and especially the questions asked from english language sections were difficult and also some questions asked from research also demanded a serious study so let's dive into the questions guys so पहला क्वेश्चन है जैसे कि हम देख पा रहे हैं कि एलिजाबेथन ड्रामेटिस्ट इमिटेटेड प्लेज बाय स्ट्रक्चरिंग द एक्शन इनटू फाइव एक्ट्स ठीक है तो उसमें कौन से फाइव विच ड्रामेटिस्ट दे एक्चुअली इमिटेटेड सो दे बेसिकली इमिटेटेड द ग्रीक ड्रामेटिस्ट ओके सो दैट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट नाउ क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टी टू we can see here uh, the first 50 questions of course i am not uh, solving them because they were of paper 1 as we know so let's move on to question 52 what is a man if his chief good and market of his time be, be but to sleep and feed a beast no more a very important question guys and we can see the answer of this question is hamlet yes uh, the answer of this question is hamlet and we see act 4 scene 4 hamlet very important play and a very uh, you can say important in the regard that uh, it's considered as the greatest tragedy by shakespeare now mirabel and melament are characters from we know guys without any further delay we know the answer the way of the world yes uh, it's known as the greatest restoration comedy way of the world was published in the year 1700 the play opens at the chocolate house chocolate um, chocolate house and uh, it has one, one of the very famous proviso scenes which is considered as a high point of uh, comedy of manners okay moving on to question 54 we have got the match the following and uh, all the four writers are university wits so the correct answer is c option okay that means george peel uh, wrote the old wives tale this question was asked also in net this time if you remember thomas kidd of course is known for the melodramatic sensational the spanish tragedy thomas nash is of course uh, remembered as the unfortunate traveler the writer who uh, wrote the first picaresque prose work unfortunate traveler jack wilton the unfortunate traveler and christopher marlowe is of course known for the jew of malta okay moving on identify a tragic drama from the following question 55 it's a no brainer guys it's the answer is all for love yes all for love is a heroic tragedy written by the dryden and written by dryden in uh, restoration age it is considered as one of the uh, important plays of uh, adaptation of shakespeare's antony and cleopatra okay question 56 alfred doolittle is a character from gb shaw's pygmalion a uh, very important play pygmalion is considered as a linguistic uh, experimental play and the play is known for its uh, very famous uh, you can say adaptation into movie later on 
Question 57, which of the following works of T.S. Eliot uses speeches of the chorus of the women of Canterbury? So the answer is murder in the cathedral. Yes, it's a poetic tragedy where uh, these uh, women uh, come as chorus and they help in, uh, you can say, dictating the, uh, the uh, four... Uh, help in foretelling the tragedy in the play murder in the cathedral is was published in and or performed in 1935 and is considered as a uh, as an important play in the revival of poetic uh, drama in the modern era who is the author of indian english play hali now i have got so many points to tell you guys here hali is a very important prose play and uh, prose poem and it is written by of course gv desani now who is gv desani gv desani is a uh, uh, or rather was a kenyan born uh, indian uh, origin writer who was raised in britain okay and he is actually known more for his uh, very important experimental work which is all about h hatter it's a story about a uh, a uh, guy who uh, has, you can say, uh, mixed origins uh, of European ancestry, uh, father from European ancestry and mother from Malay, uh, you can say, origin. And um, this is considered as a, a very important novel in 1948. Later on, in 1972, Anthony Burgess uh, adapted uh, this uh, novel and uh, famously praised this novel. And about Hali, I can say that the preface of Hali Hali came out in 1950 and the preface was written by E. M. Foster. And about um, this, um, all about H. Hatra, the great uh, Anthony Burgess said that it is um, brilliant in its, uh, you can say, prose and uh, it has Burke and Macaulay in it and decadent in Churchill, which is now dead. So this is the statement made by Anthony Burgess. Of course, he is praising him. Uh, is praising the British rhetorical elements in his uh, writings. Okay, so uh, please do do a detailed study of all these two works by G. V. Desani. Okay, uh, moving on to question fifty nine. Which of the following plays has not been written by Eugene O'Neill? Question is from American drama. The answer is All My Sons. Yes, it is written by Arthur Miller. Okay. Question 60. Who is the angry young man in John Osborne's Look Back in Anger? The answer is Jimmy Potter. Yes. Uh, the He runs a small sweet shop and uh, uh, his angry speeches in display became a highlight of the uh, angry young man generation. These angry speeches are called as tirades. The play was performed at Royal Court Theatre in London and in 1956 when it was performed, it is considered as a landmark in modern British history. Moving on to question 61 in Dryden's Absalom and Achitophel, the biblical king David is represented by King Charles II of England. Yes, Absalom and Achitophel is a mock, epic, a kind of mock satirical poem and uh, Dryden is known for writing such epics like uh, Absalom and Achitophel, like MacFlacno. And Absalom and Achitophel was a, you can say, religious allegory and in that context yeah. considered as a very important work. Okay. It represented the political crisis that was going on in England during those days. Moving on, question 62, William Langland's Pierce the Plowman is an example of. So uh, it's an important work in uh, the age of Chaucer. It is written in Middle English and uh, the work was written in the year 1377. It was written actually in West Midland dialect. And the work was known as alliterative verse. It is considered as the last great work of alliteration as well as it has allegorical elements. So guys, alliteration we know is the repetition of consonant sounds. Allegory we know is all about the representation of virtues and vices in uh, the through the characters. Okay. And uh, moving on to next question, which of the following is not a feature of neoclassical poetry? So guys, if you look at this question, uh, basically the question is, uh, is assessing our uh, in-depth knowledge of the topic. So neoclassical poetry, we all know that it's not about individuality. Individuality was a trait of romantics. So you can definitely say that only three or C is the correct answer. Okay, moving on to the next question, 64. In whose poetry themes of mysticism and mythical vision of history were the common feature? So mysticism and mythical vision were and the themes of 
William Blake. Yes, William Blake, a great pre-romantic poet known for, known for songs of innocence and songs of experience. He is also known as an engraver, guys. He engraved his poems on stone. So that is uh, there. Moving on to next question, Pilgrim uh, to the Canterbury Tales gather at Dash uh, to go to the Shrine of Dash. So again, a very important question. The answer is uh, they gather at Tabardin to go to the Shrine of St. Thomas Beckett. Okay, so the answer is A. Now, question 66. Who from the following is not one of the Cavalier poets? So, guys, we can see that A, B, and C. These three are Cavalier poets. And uh, Henry Vaughan was a metaphysical poet. In fact, he was a Welsh poet. He was a Welsh religious poet and belonged to the group of John Donne. So, the answer is Henry Vaughan. He is also known as a writer for of Silex Sintilans considered as a very important work okay and he is also called as silurist this is the place and this is the place where he belonged so silurist so question 67 guys uh, who according to dr johnson was the founder of new versification of english poetry the answer is john dryden john dryden was the founder of new versification of english poetry now question 68 identify the poet who said Bliss was it in that dawn to be alive, but to be young was very heaven. So the answer is William Wordsworth is known for commenting this uh, about, of course, he's uh, speaking about the French Revolution. The dawn here is a metaphor of French Revolution. We know French Revolution happened on, uh, in the year 1789 and is considered as a huge influence on all the romantics. Moving on to question 69, Alfred Tennyson wrote In Memoriam upon death of which friend. So Arthur Henry Hallam In Memoriam is written as a classic elegy of uh, on passing away of Arthur Henry Hallam. Moving on to the next question, which of the following is not a part of Eliot's The Wasteland? So the answer is death by fire. Death by fire is not the part of the wasteland. Death by water is one of the parts, but not death by fire. Moving on, um, question 71, which of the following works can best be associated with introduction of terms flat and round character? So the answer to this question is, of course, aspects of the novel, which was written in 1927 by E.M. Foster. Now, guys, uh, the term flat character means no behavior change, and it is re generally referred to uh, or generally referred for hero or protagonist. And round character is uh, the character which has a complex kind of personality and behaviorism and which changes its motivation and intentions often. So that is uh, who changes rather. So uh, the answer is antagonist or villain is a round character. Okay, moving on to the next question. The color purple. This question is from American literature, uh, colored American literature, feminism. And the answer is, of course, this stream of consciousness novel. It's a novel which was published in the year 1982. And in 1983, Color Purple went on to bag the Pulitzer Prize. It is a very heart-touching story of, uh, of uh, you can say, Sally, C-E-L-I-E, -E, and uh, her sister, Nettie. And how Sally was, uh, you can say, raped by her own father, Alfonso and had two children and both the children were taken away by Alfonso saying that, uh, you know, these children are dead. So uh, Color Purple is also coming of an age story where we see how the character of Sally eventually grows and become a, a very strong and self-dependent woman. And uh, the, it was made into a very famous movie also. So next question is J.D. Selinger's The Catcher in the Rye. So the answer is A, New York City. Now The Catcher in the Rye is actually a novel which is known for its, uh, uh, you can say, teenage, uh, a teenage uh, informal language. The novel was published in 1951 and had a very famous hero called as Holden Caulfield. And how Holden Caulfield again uh, eventually matures into a... a, a a more, uh, you can say, or matures into a better version of uh, himself. Uh, the story is actually written by J.D. Selinger, who is known as Recluse. He was a Jewish poet and uh, he is known for penning down some of the most memorable adult, uh, sorry, teenage fiction. 
and uh, the catcher in the rye belongs to that category. Moving on to next question, Bakha, Munu and Gangu, they have been asking this question a lot. So Mulk Raj Anand, it's a no-brainer because these famous characters are created by the famous novelist Mulk Raj Anand. Next question, which of the following works deal with the moral and ethical questions about post-independence Indian army life? So guys, this is a question directly taken from net march june to uh, sorry net march uh, 2023 where we see the question was asked from this novel distant drum so distant drum is uh, written in 1960 by manohar malgonkar guys manohar malgonkar is known as one of the leading writers of detective fiction in indian writings he, he is actually he created a famous character called as kiran garun kiran garun Okay, who was a uh, officer at Satpura range and uh, how his moral and ethical conflicts are beautifully reflected in this novel. Now, talking about Manohar Malgunkar himself, he was a lieutenant colonel in Maratha Light Infantry. Okay, and he was also a civil servant, a mine owner, a farmer and a hunter. All these things are combined together in his writings to produce some of the most beautiful fiction in the late 1960s and early 19, uh, sorry, in uh, late 1950s uh, and early 1960s. Okay. Now, moving on to next, Afra Ben Orunuku deals with the theme of the answer is A, Tale of a Noble African Slavery, Colonialism, Suriname. Orunuku was published in the year 1688. Afra Ban is known as the first professional woman writer of English literature and this work is also known as one of the first slave narratives of English literature. Moving on to next question, Henry Fielding's Tom Jones, which is considered as the greatest Picaris novel. It was published in the year 1749. Okay, and the subtitle of the novel was The Foundling, very important work. It's considered as the greatest Picaris and... Uh, Coleridge uh, considered this plot as one of the three best plots ever. Moving on, question 78. Which of the Jane Austen's works satire Gothic novel by contrasting day-to-day -day life with the imagined horrors of a Radcliffe's work? So it's a very important question, guys. Those who are uh, joining new with us or those who are preparing for the first time, the answer is Northanger Abbey. It was published in the year 1817. And this novel is a parody of uh, Gothic novels. And it was published posthumously along with Persuasion. So Persuasion and Northanger Abbey were the novels which were published posthumously. Um, you know, that is after the death of Jane Austen. Now, in this uh, novel, the characters are Henry Tilney, a very important character of Northanger Abbey. And uh, we have got C. Maudland also, M-O-R-L-A-N-D, as a very important female character. Moving on to the next question, guys, question 79, which of the following works gives unusual perspective on the Napoleon war and criticizes high society? So it's a very important novel. Uh, you can say uh, uh, the answer is Vanity Fair by William McPhee's Tegre. The novel is considered as a cult classic in terms of, you can say, characterization and it's considered as one of the fiercest satirist, uh, satirical novel. And uh, the novel has a subtitle called as The Novel Without a Hero. So it's a story of, uh, you can say, two sisters. Okay, Becky Sharp, if you remember the character, Becky Sharp is uh, the famous street smart character and has got her sister, Amelia Sedley, which is just the contrast to Becky Sharp and uh, how the story you know, evolves is the main point. Vanity Fair is taken from uh, Bunyan's Pilgrim Progress. Moving on to question number 80. Which of the following novels has not been written by Virginia Woolf? So guys, the answer is D, The Well Beloved. Now I have got something to tell you here. The Well Beloved actually is a novel by Thomas Hardy. And would you believe it? It was published in 1897. Although the novel was serialized in 1892, but eventually it was published in 1897. So it is considered as one of the lesser known novels of Hardy. Moving on, James Boswell is known for his autobiography of Life of Samuel Johnson published in 1791. It is considered as one of the greatest biographies ever of English literature. Moving on, 
the autobiography of Alice B. Toklas. Now, this is a very important question, guys. This is actually very important because this question, uh, most of the students would have done as because it's an autobiography. So the understood answer is Alice B. Toklas. But the correct answer is Gertrude Steen actually wrote the autobiography of Alice B. Toklas. And it was written in 1933. It is considered as the greatest work that uh, Gertrude Steen wrote. And here she talks about her lesbian relationship with uh, her cook, with her, you can say, confidante, with her friend, Alice B. Toklas, who was a female and who lived along with her in the very famous French saloons called as they have a saloon. Saloon uh, is a place where, you know, they used to have this fashion meetings and all. So Gertrude Steen had this very, um, you, can, you can say, famous relationship with Alice B. Toklas. And uh, Gertrude Steen is the one who famously coined the term lost generation. Although uh, Hemingway further you know, popularized this term in his novels. Uh, one more important thing is that uh, in the saloon of Gertrude Steen and Alice B. Toklas, there were some famous American writers who used to visit. It was in France, as I told you. Moving on to question number 83, which of the following is not an aspect of Bacon, which he did not write? So the answer is colonialism. He never, of course, wrote about this directly. Question 84 is incorrect statement from the following. The A option is incorrect. The Coverdale Bible was not published in 1545. Rather, it was 1535 and it was translated from Vulgate's uh, Bible. So that is there. Now, the good point here is that all the other three points like Bishop Bible, King James Bible, and uh, John Wycliffe's Bible. That's all the three years are important, and you must make a note of all these three years. Moving on, guys, uh, we have got uh, question number 85 here, a very important question indeed. Now we can see here in question 85 to 11, morality with wit and to with uh, temper wit with morality is the declared objective of so this is a very important statement i often teach this line in my class and it's taken from the spectator guys uh, spoken by edison i think yes and um, this has a very important figure of speech called as chiasmus or chiasmus rather okay now moving on to question 86 samuel johnson's dictionary of english language it was published in the year 1755 Okay, simple question. Which of the following is not written by? You can say uh, Jawaharlal Nehru. The answer is science and education. It is not written by Jawaharlal Nehru. The other three works are written by him. An autobiography was written in 1936. Glimpses of World History came out in 1934. And Discovery of India came out in 1946. Moving on to question number 88 of Rajasthan Slate Paper 2. The Life Divine is written by Sri Aurobindo. So the work is considered as a magnum opus of Sri Aurobindo. It was published collectively together in 1919 and it was before that serialized in the magazine called as Arya. Okay, moving on to question number 89. The author of the autobiography of an unknown Indian is Nirad C. Chaudhary. Okay. So Nirad C. Chaudhary uh, wrote this work in the year 1951, Nirat C. Chaudhary is known as an open supporter and a admirer of British culture, culture. And that's why there is a term that we use for such people called as Anglophile. A-N-G-L-O-P-H-I-L-E. Anglophile. Okay. So that is there. Question number 90. R.K. Narayan's The Emerald Route is a travelogue, to, a travelogue of visit to Dash. So the answer is uh, Karnataka. This is actually a pseudo pseudo fiction or pseudo travelogue where he combines some element of his fantasy and some element of realism the work was published in the year 1980 emerald route is a travelogue of visit to karnataka okay uh, don't get confused with tamil nadu because emerald island is generally uh, you know called as we call sri lanka as an emerald island and it has a connection with tamil nadu so the correct answer is Karnataka. Moving on, the first recorded use of the term English for academic purpose, it was uh, in 1974. Now, now, now you will see 
distinct kind of questions taken from taken from the language section which is where i told you that this paper got trickier okay so question 91 is done now moving on to question 92 in the context of language teaching full form of nns so it is non native speaker the full form of nns is non native speaker so question number 93 is full form of ASTP. The answer is Army Specialized Training Program. So guys, this is a this was a very important specialized training program in the year 1942 for US Army, where they were given a specialist uh, training for a particular, you can say, um, kind of educational programs. And it was in World War II. So it's a very important kind of development in English language. Moving on to the next question, the communicational teaching project handed by N.S. Prabhu is also known as a Bangalore project. Okay, It also helped in uh, gaining huge grounds for Indian English language Bangalore project by N.S. Prabhuji. Okay, so that is there. Next question is question number 95. Now, this is where I could not get the correct answer the this question. So, I am circling it. So the answer is, uh, question is, return to philology is written by, jointly by whom? So after a lot of research, I could just find out Paul D. Mann as the answer. And also one of the work did was very close or rather a part of this work was resistance to theory. So that is what all I could find. So this question is open to challenge according to my knowledge. If you have any uh, better answer than this, please do comment. Moving on to next question is question 96. The dash is the implicit system of elements of distinctions and opposition and of principles of combination which make it possible within a language community for a speaker to produce and the auditor to understand a particular dash. So the answer is competence and performance. Okay, so this is a very important term given by Chomsky. Chomsky where uh, competence is all about having the ability and performance is all about doing it. Okay, so that is there. Next question is also... Uh, from our uh, linguistic section. So uh, find the incorrect statement describing course in general linguistics. So guys, we know that this was a very important question on a work and the incorrect statement is C. That is, it is based on lectures delivered from during 1906 to 1911. Okay, it's not 12. So there's a, there is a, this minor error in this C part. Rest, the other three sentences are absolutely correct. That is, it is a seminal work on modern synchronic linguistics. Synchronic is looking language at one particular point of time. It's opposite to diachronic, which is looking language historically. The word philology also means looking language historically. Okay. Then it was published from student notes. This is also absolutely true. The author of the book is French speaking Swiss national. That's also correct. His name was, of course, we all are familiar with his very famous name. We are talking about Ferdinand de Sassoon. Okay, moving on to the next work. In which work Noam Chomsky initiated transformational generative grammar? So, guys, the answer to this question is uh, Syntactic Structures, a very important book which was published in the year 1957, laid the foundation of this transformational generative grammar model. Moving on to next question, uh, the vertical relations between any single word in a sentence and other words that are phonologically, syntactically or semantically similar and which can be substituted. Is, uh, it is called as the relation for, of substitution. So the answer to this question is very important, paradigmatic relationship. Paradigmatic relationship is the one where words can be substituted. It can be synonym, it can be uh, antonym. Say for example, very important, uh, you can say example like frigid can be substituted with the word cold and similarly cold can be substituted with antonym hot. So both the words, although they have in one case similar relationship and in one case dissimilar relationship, but both can be substituted. So that's why we will say that they will have a paradigmatic relationship. Okay, Edward Sapir and Leonard Bloomfield devise a linguistic theory to analyze so, of course, here we are talking about Native American languages, which they analyzed. If you remember Sapir and Worf analysis. Okay. Question number 101 is, uh, which resolution of Charter Act clearly stated that England was obligated to promote interests and happiness of the 
uh, you can say natives and you can say uh, measures ought to be adopted that may lead to introduction among them of useful knowledge. So this question is again, guys, I will say that not able to find the exact answer. If you can find it, please do let me know. Okay. Because it's better to hold the answer rather than telling you all the wrong answer. So moving on to next question is 102. To whom did Raja Ramuhan Roy write a letter on English education that argued against the establishment of Sanskrit school? Now, this is a very important question. It was actually a letter given to Lord Amherst in the year 1823, where we see that Raja Ramuhan Roy worked against, you can say, the Sanskrit school. And in a way, he had been promoting English language. So what do you call such people who kind of initiated the support of English language uh, instead of the native languages, Orientalists? Now, question 103, who is the author of On the Education of the People of India in 1838? So the answer is C.E. Treblin. So C.E. Treblin is considered as one of the pioneers of uh, early English language in India. Question 104. In which year did Charles Grant, an um, employee of East India Company, recommend the dissemination of European literature and science through the medium of English among the people of India? So the answer is 1792. That is the answer. Okay. Moving on to next question. Who from the following opined? This is a very important question. That all the literature of East are not worth a single shelf of a good European library. So in a way, it's a colonial remark supporting or kind of advocating the European culture over the uh, Eastern culture. So the answer is T.B. Macaulay, Lord Bevington Macaulay, Thomas Bevington Macaulay, the one who wrote Minutes on Education. Now, this question again is open to, uh, you know, for all the answers because I could not find about this book, Swati Joshi. Uh, is talking about one book where he's considering that the English has always been uh, viewed like any other, not uh, like any other foreign language. Okay, it has a long history and all these things. So we can find this on our own because uh, or through answer key, the correct answer would be, you know, uh, it would be easy for us to find. Now, next question is, who is the author of the English Utilitarians in India? So the answer is Eric Stokes. This book is was published in the year 1959 and is considered as the one which promoted, now listen carefully, the one which promoted scientific backing of data over the morality, moral aspect of utilitarianism. If I, uh, you can say, just bring in the concept of J.S. Mill, who famously kind of criticized Indians for their too much of morality in his theory of utilitarianism in 19th century. Moving on, question number 108. Who identified two broad categories of non-native, uh, you can say, varieties of English in India, the institutionalized and the performance variety? Braj Kachru is the answer. Okay. Now, 109, which, which year the official Language Amendment Act make English an associate language of the Union of India without any time limit? The answer is 1965. Okay, moving on to the next question. V.K. Gokak authored a book on the status of English in India in 1964 titled as English in India, Its Present and Future. Now, V.K. Gokak is an English scholar and also a great, uh, you can say, scholar of Kannada language and uh, his works are internationally known. Okay, question 111. Raymond Williams, culture and society can be best affiliated with Culture studies, of course. Mythologies by Rula Barth can be considered precursor to which school of theory. So that is post-structuralism. We know Rula Barth kind of come in between structuralism and post-structuralism. Now, question number 113, again a question from, you can say, post-colonial and other theorists. The answer is D, uh, sorry, A option. That is Gauri Vishwanath. And Vishwanathan wrote the beginnings of English literary study in British India, Ajaz Ahmed wrote uh, Indian literature notes towards the uh, something like that. And Stephen Greenblatt wrote 
definition of category and Raymond Williams is all about culture. Marvin Harris in the rise of anthropology coined the term cultural materialism. Very important word. Cultural materialism was coined by Marvin Harris. Okay, important fact for all of us to note down. Now, roots of American culture studies can be found in new historicism, of course. It's an exclusive theory of America. Next question, the Center for Contemporary Culture Studies that played a critical role in developing the very important question, guys, this one. Field of Culture Studies was founded at the University of Birmingham. Okay, it's in, of course, Britain. Next question is again, uh, Richard Hogarth's, you can say, uses of literacy. Okay, one of the seminal works on culture studied in England was published in the year 1964. Hogarth was one of the founders of culture studies in, you can say, Britain. Now, Stephen Greenblatt, uh, one of the writers of cultural uh, materialism, oh, sorry, uh, new historicism, He's, he connects his study to the study of culture, showing how subjectivation achieved through ideological and narrative patterning of the self. Okay. Culture studies reader. Now, this question again is open to the, you can say, speculation because you could not find the exact answer of this question. Now, moving on to question number 120, a famous question, political Shakespeare, important. I would put a star over here. Political Shakespeare has been asked multiple times. It is written by jointly by Jonathan Dollymore and Alan Selfield. It's considered as one of the pioneering works of Shakespearean criticism and also work under cultural materialism. Question 121, which of the following is not a member of Bloomsbury? So guys, we know Bloomsbury was a group of modern writers in the in the second decade of 20th century. So the answer is T.S. Eliot. He did not belong to this group. The rest three were the important members. Iambic pentameter lines rhyming in pairs can also be termed as heroic couplets, of course. If the lines are rhyming and they are in pairs, it's heroic couplet. Okay. Now, question number uh, 123, we have to arrange them in a chronology. So we can say that uh, the answer would be starting from uh, Lives of Poets. So the second option, uh, Lives of Poets, uh, was published in the year 1779. Then after that, we can say Biographia Literaria came in 1817. And then we have got Essays in Criticism by, of course, Matthew Arnold in 1865. And Practical Criticism appeared in 1929. So the answer would be second and then one and then three and four. So A option, second, one, three, four. Okay, Plato expounded his theory of forms in Fido and Republic. So one and two. So the answer is A. Who among the following can be credited with writing philosophy of rhetoric? This was written by I. A. Richards, the one with the one who wrote practical criticism as well. In 1986, which critic opined that a poem? Sorry, not 1986. Which uh, 126 question? Which literary critic opined that a poem is like a painting? So the answer is Horace. If you remember the famous quotation that was asked in in net also, what was the quotation? At picture poesis, very important quotation. As in painting, so in poetry. Okay, very important. Question 127. Sydney's apology for poetry was, of course, a response uh, to the school of abuse written by very popular question, Stephen Gosson's work. 128. Which work by Emily Zola is considered as a manifesto of naturalism? Yes, guys, it was germinal, a very important uh, development uh, in terms of naturalistic novels in Europe. Germinal is also known as the novel of scientific detailism, where the minute, uh, you can say, action of the characters are scrutinized. Okay, naturalism by Emily Zola. Now, question 129, which of the following has not been written by Matthew Arnold, the answer is, of course, The Birth of Tragedy. This was written by the great Nietzsche. If you remember Frederick Nietzsche, the one who wrote famously, God is Dead, and whose philosophy, Nietzschean philosophy, was popularly used by Darid, Jacques Darid in Deconstruction. Okay, next question is, question number 130. Roman Jacobson proposed three functions of language which were referential, emotive, and connotive. 
Identify the correct statement which defines new historicism. It's a very important question, guys. If your theory is sound, you can answer these questions in a second. Okay. So the answer is it attended primarily to the historical and cultural conditions because new historicism takes the non literary text and literary text within the same, you can say, uh, they juxtapose both the texts together. So we can say that uh, non-literary text is given the equal weightage as literary text in new historicism. Very important point, guys. So uh, if your theory is sound, then you can definitely approach any question confidently in net or sled. That's why I openly welcome the students who are watching all these videos to come and uh, learn theory together. It would be wonderful. Okay, moving on to next question. Question 132. Edward said's Orientalism. Okay. Applied revised form of historical critique of discourse by uh, Michael, Michael Foucault. Michael Foucault is known as one of the great uh, French anthropologists who is known for his work on discourse. Okay. Michael Foucault is known for his work on sexuality, discourse, where he said that discourse is a system of thought that governs the knowledge by a knowledge of a person okay so discourse was a negative term so edward sides in his orientalism which is considered as the manifesto of post-colonialism in 1978 uh, of course uh, was inspired from michael michael foucault's theory now who from the following is not associated with the coinage of the term hybridization of colonial languages the answer is um, salman rajdi of course, is not associated with the coinage of hybridization. The other three writers, of course, are the writers of the empire looks back and they, in a way, were related to the hybridization of colonial languages. Derrida uses this term to refer to the unresolvable difficulties a text may open up. So the answer is caporia, which is a kind of textual nod. Julia Kristeva is associated with the word, with the word intertextuality, very important term. Now, which of the following is not a member of Russian communism group called as Society for the Study of Poetic Languages? The answer is Viktor Sklovoski. He was a member of Opojas and this group is a different group. Okay. The rest, Osip Brick, Boris Echenbaum and Yuri Tanyanov are the members. Now, moving on to question number 137. Four thinkers and their works are mentioned. The answer is C. That is, Elaine Showalter wrote The Female Tradition. Uh, Juliet Michel wrote Femininity, Narrative and Psychoanalysis. George Lukacs, one of the great modern Marxist writers, uh, wrote uh, Cultural Realism and Socialist Realism and Michael Barrett wrote Ideology and the Cultural Production of the Gender. So it's a question from, you can say, feminism. Uh, next question is Being and Time, 1927. Hidegger insisted that philosophers to date had still failed to answer the question of what is being. And that was raised by Kant. So being and time is one of the important work of, you can say, existentialism as well as uh, the other theories, uh, modern theories propounded by Hidegger. Okay. Uh, like uh, there were many theories like uh, biblical studies, hermeneutics that actually were taken into consideration when we talk about Hidegger. Moving on to question 139, New Left Review, a very important work, seminal work in 1960 was first edited by Stuart Hall, a Welsh culture studies critic. Now question 140, Fried suggested that we bear a form of otherness okay, within ourselves. That is defined later on. Next question is 141. Which of the following can provide a decisive answer to questions of relationship when other evidences are vague or amb ambiguous? The answer is note taking. When you are note taking, that means when you are noting down, then in that situation, uh, note taking helps in the decisiveness of the establishing of relationships, which according to Fritz and Bars, is a uh, writer from textual criticism if you remember greg and bars theory very important okay greg and bars theory do uh, make a note of that it's there in mh abrahams so it's not a type of bibliography the answer is analytical is not a type of bibliography okay now one these are questions from research methods and materials in english unit 10 
research hypothesis must be tested against all the discoverable facts related to it which of the following is not directly restricted associated with the process of note making the answer is perfection we are not looking for perfection in note making what we are looking for is efficiency individuality of course and of course accuracy which of the following is not part of the standard bibliographical entry the answer is number of total pages we don't include that in uh, standard bibliographical entry but we do include is title place and edition how to carry out research can be best described as a research method of course then in relation to literary research ict stands for information and communication technology uh, now question 148 is very interesting which of the following parts of speech should be capitalized inside titles when you are writing titles of a work of a book or of an article what should be put in capital so the answer is pronoun now here i am telling you what all things can be put in should be put in capitalized the answer is noun pronoun adjective verbs and adverbs okay they should be put in capitalized format and what should not be capitalized of course articles prepositions and conjunctions they should not be put in capital so that is there and all these things should be put in capital so very important information guys now moving on to the next is identify the correct full form of mla now the answer is of course uh, modern language association uh, the the trick here is that some of the students might have got confused in modern language association of america although it's in america but the correct answer is modern language association simply modern language association it was formed in 1883 and it is considered as one of the you can say standard organization which actually or formatting style which actually is followed all over the world uh, the humanitarian research scholars follow mla format so it's a very important mla format its uh, modern mla format is edited by gibaldi you know a very famous writer i think 7th or 8th edition of gibaldi is there and uh, mla actually publishes four periodicals which are of high very high impact factor i would just name the periodicals one is ade bulletin the second is adfl bulletin the third is profession these are the name of four periodicals official periodicals of mla organization and the fifth is pmla okay now last is presenting another or uh, person's ideas works or entire works as your own work without giving credit is called as of course plagiarism so guys this is it according to my knowledge i have tried to answer all the questions that are there in rajasthan slat paper 2 english some of the questions are still remaining so i really uh, i really uh, appreciate if you can answer that and also meanwhile you can join our mp slat batch which is running uh, presently and you can join us there on this number you can call us and you can have the you can say demo classes so till my next lecture stay tuned for all the net grf classes for june mission grf june english and also for mp slat thank you